Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Rachel, for the introduction and for the partnering. And I just want to say um, we are so thrilled to be part of this organization, part of this uh, event. And uh, Good Business Colorado has been such a great partner of ours as well. So we are just really um, excited to present and um, talk to all of you and also hopefully provide some um, some good tips and tricks and uh, into the international trade. So again, um, this session is uh, about the introduction to international trade and why trade is important. We also, at the end of the session, going to present a global trade activator incubator for immigrant entrepreneurs program as well. So um, let me start by first introducing ourselves. Um, I'm going to do a quick introduction of myself and then Amar, if you want to introduce yourself as well. Uh, my name is Tanya Arndt. I'm a director of a global trade activator here at World Trade Center Denver. Um, so I'm really excited to, to present uh, today. Amar. Hi, everyone. My name is Amar Alima, and I'm the program manager for Global Trade Activator Incubator Program. And thank you so much for having us. So first of all, why is trade important? The United States is the world's largest economy and the largest exporter and importer of goods and services. Trade is critical to America's uh, prosperity, and it does fuel economic growth. It supports jobs at home. It raises living standards and really provides goods and services to the American con consumers at affordable prices. So uh, first, let's look at the trade in the United States. The United States has exported two point more than two trillion of goods and services uh, in goods and nine hundred twenty four billion in services in twenty twenty two. And for the import, so something that comes in into the country, so it was $3.2 trillion in goods in 2022. The top markets for the imports are Canada, Mexico, and China. For the export, you will see it's the same. So those are our major uh, trade partners of the United States. This is a different uh, graph slightly, but I think it's also sometimes it's, it's important to see the information in different ways. So um, here you can see export imports from 2018. And if you look here at 2020, it's uh, there is a little bit of dip of a dip here. But then again, uh, the growth, it's when we had a pandemic and then there is a growth again for the um, 2022. So now let's bring it a little bit closer uh, to home, to Colorado. So the... Colorado exports 10.3 billion in goods and services in 2022, and the top markets are Canada, Mexico, and China the same. Uh, for the imports, you see we also have a little bit higher number, uh, so it's 20 billion in goods, and this one is actually, it's in 2022, the number is updated, but not the, the date. And we imported goods from uh, 168 countries. So. Now that we've seen all this uh, trade statistics, I think it's important to like, if you are the company who is uh, getting ready to do international business, you really need to think about so many different uh, areas of your company and prepare your company for the exports or imports. And um, these are just some of the areas that will be affected if you start uh, doing international trade. First of all, is production, right? So what kind of products are you going to produce? Are you going to change your products at all uh, for the for which specific market? Sales and marketing. So they need to know what they're selling, what their pricing strategy, uh, how do you find um, the customers overseas? Customer service. I think sometimes this is uh, get overlooked uh, in the beginning, but if you are offering 20, 24-7 um, customer service in the United States in your um, organization here. So that might be very different if you go abroad. Make sure to have that as well. Finance and accounting uh, is another one, is a big one, right? So you need to make sure that your finance and accounting departments are ready for those transactions. Um, what currency you're going to sell your product in to, to make sure that you still um, have a good uh, profit margin. 
shipping and distribution, logistics, how you're going to get that product to your customer, legal, uh, right? So the legal is uh, also quite important. Human resources, who's going to be working with what kind of um, agreements you're going to have, how you're going to hire people, are they going to be um, distributors, agents, and things like this. So there are different ways to to look at it. Procurement and purchasing, that's another department that needs to be uh, aware of your international transactions. So, all right, so now let's look at the sales, right? So when you are, and basically the biggest, the biggest issue uh, that people have is how do you find international buyers? And there are so many different ways you can do that. Um, first of all, you do need to build out your online presence. Um, you also can have some of the help from U.S. government service, uh, such as U.S. commercial service. They have a gold key um, service that you you pay a fee and they will be able to um, organize some of the meetings with, with some industry uh, partners. Some state government uh, also have a lot, quite a few resources for companies that want to go overseas. Also, you might want to participate and exhibit at global or domestic trade shows. This is where you can find the buyers or partners. Network with industry peers and associations. Um, there are also different ways in purchasing public sector data. Um, and uh, if you are already working with some partners, that's also a good way to um, to talk to them and see if you can expand your sales. And of course, World Trade Center uh, global network as well, because we are present in 320 in, in 90 countries and there are 320 centers around the world. All right. So the next one is the production. Production is, um, so there are two main strategies what you, you can do with your products when you uh, decide to go to a specific market. One is uh, standardization, so where you actually do not really do uh, too much um, adjusting to your products, and they the products and services will be used in the same way. So Nikes and Levi's uh, have adopted this strategy, so Nikes will be the same basically in any country. And then there is a second approach, which is adaptations. So... Um, this is when you go when you go to a new market, you are considering all these factors, such as that there might be different tastes, there might be different foreign regulations, packaging preference, fit specific safety and function requirements. Um, such some some of the examples of this strategy can be IKEA, McDonald's, Coca-Cola. Um, so like, for example, McDonald's in China, there will be some of them, uh, some of the items might be exactly the same as they are here in the United States. And some of them can be um, slightly different or adjusted to a specific taste. Um, I think another one is also that for this packaging preferences, for example, there is a manufacturer of ice cream here in Colorado. And when they decided to um, enter Japanese market, they um, they send the samples of their ice cream in gallons as they selling the ice cream here. But uh, after talking to the customer uh, customers there, they realized that the size is very important, right? So they uh, they had to adapt and change the sizing sizing and packaging to a much smaller quantities, and that actually worked much better for that specific market. All right. So once you decide on the product that you have and um, another uh, really big, big thing to consider is that you do truly need to vet your partners, uh, that your potential partners and customers that you validate and make sure that truly a good partners. There are so many different stories that we've heard here at World Trade Center Denver where Companies are not fully screening <clears throat> their partners, and um, you know then they can end up with a, a lot of uh, different fines. So one of the one of the most important things is a Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, 
also known as FCPA, is a U.S. statute that prohibits U.S. firms and individuals from paying bribes uh, to foreign officials to further a business deal. Uh, Both the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, and the Department of Justice are responsible for enforcing FCPA. And when you're dealing um, business in different countries, you just need to make sure that uh, this is truly enforced. And then you can require a written um, agreement of the enforcement of FCPA. All right. So then once you know what your product, what your product strategy is, then how you can find your cus- your customers. It's also about the marketing, right? So what, what do you do? Or what do you need to do in order to uh, adapt and uh, find those um, customers in that specific market? And um, these are just some of the areas you need to consider. First of all, is language barriers. Um, I think, you know, now I think it's becoming easier and easier to use a Google Translate. But uh, nevertheless, I think it's very important to um, to make sure that you have some local partners who can proofread uh, your all your marketing materials. Because again, there are quite a lot of funny stories how companies translated um, things and never really proofread with the locals like I think it was which it was a it was a car car company that translated their marketing materials that says doesn't go in Spanish I think it's uh no vow or something like that <laughs> so that's uh, so funny <laughs> <laughs> right or I think there was also a vacuum cleaner that um I think when they brought to the United States I think they said it sucks really. It it really sucks, or something like that. So, um, again, so those uh, slogans are pretty funny. Tastes and preferences. Again, what I was talking about McDonald's, right? So when you go to a different market, there might be different tastes, very uh, varying cultural norms, religious beliefs, and varying business norms as well. So all those things need to be considered. All right. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about import compliance. You know, we talked about exporting and importing. Um, and therefore the import compliance, the main agency that regulate imports is U.S. Customs and Border Protection, but also known as CBP. So what they do is they collect revenue, they collect trade statistics, and they enforce import laws. So this is definitely the agency to, that we need to work with. And uh, here's the simplified U.S. import process map. So the documents need to be filled out for the import. And um, uh, it all has to be filled out. And then you, you go and assess the value of your import and pay the duties, custom clearance and then payment of duties. So CBP. CBP uh, enforces what they call a Reasonable Care Act. So it's the importer's burden to act responsibly in their quest for accurate and complete information to support entry summaries and all other declarations to U.S. Customs. So that's the responsibility of the importer to make sure that all documents are accurate. So... When we look at import compliance, or uh, if any of you are thinking of bringing products to the United States, number one thing is uh, we need to determine what is it, what the product is, then what the value of that product is, where it is from, and what's the quantity. It sounds all like, seems to be like, well, those are, those are pretty simple questions. Um, however, it's, uh, not always that straightforward as you, as you might think. So first one is what is the product? So in order to, um, to determine what the product is, you really need to find the H, uh, HS code of your product. And, um, in order to get the HS code, um, so it's called HTS US. Um, there are 99 chapters, uh, to that. So you can just go on the website you can search with a keyword 
But then as you see here, for example, T might have so many different categories, right? So the first six digits of that HTS code is actually harmonized through uh, the whole world. And then the next two here that you see here, this is specific to the US. So that's why it is called HTS US. And that code actually gives you uh, a lot of information here. But look at this. For the tea specific, um, green tea, if it's flavored or unflavored, and you will see that it's a different um, different duty. Certified organic, a different one. If it's certified organic, flavored or not flavored. So all of these things are, are important and you will use that code when you're bringing the products in the United States. So next to it, you also can see here the quantity. So the quantity you see in kilos. So let's say you are importing something and it's a different type of um, quantity. So you want to make sure that you are specifying the right one. Then there are also countries, right? So that's uh, uh, we're going to go through that in a little bit. Then you need to identify the value of your product. That's also, it's not very, um, it's not that uh, straightforward again to identify the value. Typically, it's uh, price payable when transaction is nearly closed. Uh, there are other values considerations such as transfer pricing issues when the exporter and importer are related or the provision of goods such as raw material, like what's the value is. And you need to account for all these other expenses in the determining the value of the goods. The next category, where is this product from? And I think it's very often it is can be misused with thinking, well, if this product is coming from China, that means that that's the product of China. But that is not the case. The same way, for example, you know, there are a lot of free trade agreements. So we really need to, to know what the country of origin of these products are. So, um, again, like, for example, because we have some free trade agreements, right? So then the goods will not have any duties and taxes on, uh, when they enter the United States. Uh, like, for example, we have the agreements, uh, with, with Mexico, with Canada, but those products can be purchased in China. So then they're products of China. And the quantity. So the quantity is probably one of the main straightforward answer to that. Uh, because again, you've seen there at, at the harmonized, um, it's the HTS codes. You can see it has a specific, uh, units, how you count it. So you need to make sure that that fits, um, and that you use those units to measure your product. So bottom line, when you have your HTS code, you know your origin, and th then you can identify the duty rate. Duty rate plus the value of your product plus the quantity, and that will be the revenue to the government. All right, so now World Trade Center Denver. So World Trade Center Denver is international business um, it's a network of international business professionals dedicated exclusively to the international business success of companies in Colorado and the surrounding Rocky Mountain region. Our mission um, is to help Colorado companies collaborate locally, connect strategically, and thrive on the global stage. Um, typically, there are World Trade Centers have two major lines of business, which is global business services. And this is practical knowledge with real world application delivered by, um, practicing experts and real estate, right? So here you, you see that. So World Trade Center Denver specifically, we do provide a lot of, uh, business services. And right now we are so happy to, um, to have a real estate coming as well. So we're building our, um, our campus, um, that will be open in 2025, expected date. So at World Trade Center Denver, we do have three major pillars, service pillars. Number one is uh, market entry strategy and framework development. 
Two is the global operational alignment and support. And number three is international trade compliance. With that in mind, when we have those three service pillars, all of our services, so all of our programs will have those elements in them. Now, I'd like to um, introduce our program that is called Global Trade Activator Program. It's an incubator and accelerator program designed for Colorado-based companies and entrepreneurs looking to increase their global presence and achieve greater prosperity through international trade. Um, the program takes participants who are developing their companies through a customizable process, providing access to mentors, training, technical assistance, resources, talent, and finding to build, build out their global business. Global Trade Activator does have two tracks. One is the incubator track, uh, and that is designed specifically for immigrant entrepreneurs who want to start their own export-import company. And the second track is for, it's called Accelerator, and it's designed for small to medium-sized businesses that want to expand internationally and leverage suppliers globally. So now I'm going to uh, pass it on to Amar. Amar can share um, the slides for you, and she's going to talk about the specific Global Trade Activator Incubator Program. Thank you, everyone. Yes. So Global Trade Activator Incubator Program is, yes, uh, Incubator Program is designed for first-generation immigrant and refugee entrepreneurs. It helps turn an American dream into reality and supports immigrant entrepreneurs at every stage. From an initial idea of a business to a fully operational business which likely incorporates the trade of the goods or services with their countries or regions of origin and the United States. Running a global business in the United States is, is very complicated, even for Native Americans or American-born people. So what do we do at the Global Trade Incubator Program? And to... Uh, who should join this program. So it's for immigrant entrepreneurs who are thinking to start export-import business or those who are thinking to grow their existing international business or for those who are thinking to work in international trade and have a network support. Global Trade Activator Program involves many different steps. So at the beginning, we assess our participants' needs, uh, whichever the needs could be, for example, if they study in the business or they have existing business, we'll assess their uh, current situation and come up with a customized work plan for them. Also in our program, our participants can join a university programs such as MSU Lounge Denver, Denver Business uh, Fundamental Program with the Denver University where they can develop the business plans, learn a lot of um, technical international trade skills, and also they can get certified with the short-term programs from the universities. And we also have certificate of international trade where our participants can be learning about the tariffs, um, how to identify their harmonized code of their product based on that, how they can pay the duties and tariffs how how they can ship the containers overseas. All that uh, can be learned through our CIT program, Certificate of International Trade Program. And also we have uh, on-demand workshops. For example, if we see our participants need um, to have a, to learn how to register their trademark with the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, we will develop workshops like that, or we will be uh, partnering with a lot of different organizations to provide uh, on-demand workshops for our participants. And also we have many mentors in our program who specialize in a lot of different fields, such as um, it could be a trademark office, or it could be, uh, for example, FDA regulations, accounting, uh, or business loans, <clears throat> whichever mentors are needed in our program, participants, we will uh, make sure to provide mentors as well. And, and we have many student assistants who volunteer for our program from many different universities, such as MSU, DU, CU, 
Uh, those uh, student assistants can be helping with our participants' uh, market research or developing the business plan, um, maybe help with the English as well, because many of our participants uh, are coming to us and uh, usually it's their second language, so they might need a little extra help. And also we do coaching. So World Trade Center staff will be coaching and there will be a lot of networking events as well where our participants can network with another company owners or uh, as as you know, World Trade Center's network of a lot of small and big companies. So we provide a lot of networking as well. So in our Global Trade Activator Incubator Program, we have three levels. Level one is for idea and interest. Uh, is for those that are just starting the business. Participants might have an idea, an interest in opening the company or want to work in international trade. They will have access to international trade education, business foundations, testing the business idea and networking with the, the like-minded community. And in level two, uh, we have participants who are registering their companies and planning their business plan. Uh, This level is for those that have already decided on their business idea and are ready to register their business. All this uh, level, you will also have access to some help from student assistant and bi-weekly follow-up sessions to help you finish your business plan. And in level three, we have participants who are growing their business and executing a lot of different strategies for example, sales strategies. And this level is for those that have registered their business and have the product on the market. At this level, you will have access to mentors and some technical assistance specific to your product and industry, as well as support for getting access to capital. And Global Trade Activating Beta Program. So we, we do many different things in this program, such as, for example, providing international trade education with 80% discount for immigrant entrepreneurs. Uh, During this uh, training, you can learn the export strategy, import logistics, export documentation, export, import compliance, selling your product on e-commerce, international sales and marketing strategies. And you will have access to World Trade Center Denver advisors as well. As we mentioned, uh, World Trade Center staff will be doing bi-weekly follow-ups with you and program-specific workshops on business foundations and access to capital. So, for example, we actually help our participants uh, develop their international business plan, apply for business loan, and we make sure we are doing everything to help them to uh, get approved for the business loan. And we also work with many different financial institutions that we can connect as well. And we have also World Trade Center help desk that we just uh, posted the link on chat. So you can ask many different questions, even difficult questions. For example, if you need to know which port are we using from Mexico uh, to import goods to Denver or United States. All those questions can be asked through our World Trade Center help desk. And we have mentorship program as well, available at level three participants. Uh, As I mentioned early, for example, if somebody needs to um, learn how to apply trademark or even do research if the trademark they're thinking is already taken or not. So we have mentors who can be helping on the specific subject. And also we have business education through our partners. So we are partnered with Minority Business Office uh, through Business Foundation Technical Assistant Program or participants can learn how to register their businesses, how to get their EIN tax ID numbers, how to develop their websites, and many more. A lot more is included in this program. And those who go through the program will be eligible for startup grants. And there's always many different grants. 
depending on the business, if it's the startup or is it existing business that has been running already two, three years, that for those businesses, there will be different grants that they can get approved. So we can provide all information on that as well. And with the University of Denver, we have a program, short-term program. It, it's like three or four months program uh, called Business Foundation Certificate Program. Or World Trade Center mentors will be teaching the specifics on how to develop your international business. And also we are partnered with Metropolitan State University of Denver. And we are running also short-term program, which is three or four months called Launch Denver. And in this program, our participants can learn how to develop their business plan. By the end of the program, participants will be able to come up with a business plan, learn how to do pitch, and also they will be eligible to get certified with a certificate from the university that could be also very helpful if they're looking for jobs as well. Yes, thank you so much. So I'll be giving this back to Tanya. Yeah, how long does it take? Um, and I, I, I just saw some actually some some of the questions in the chat about that as well. So um, this program right now is fully fully supported by grants. Uh, so typically it cost six thousand dollars to run this program per participant, um, but because uh, we were able to secure some of the grants and we are able to offer this program completely free of charge uh, to the immigrants. You do need to become a member of World Trade Center Denver because we are a membership organization. So your membership lasts for a year. Um, so the membership costs $100. Again, it's a very discounted. Um, we try to make sure that the barrier to enter and access these uh, resources are very, very minimal. So um, at a $100, you become a World Trade Center Denver. And then if you're eligible, if you're an immigrant entrepreneur, you'll have access to this program for free. And then how long does it take uh, to go, for example, through levels that Amar explained? It truly depends on each particular participants, uh, participant, um, how much time they have and how much time they're ready to dedicate to their business. Some people have their idea ready. They have already their product identified. So it takes them, um, you know, pretty fast to go through, through one level to another. And some, uh, takes, take a little bit more time to, to learn different aspects of it and do a little bit more market research. Yeah. So how much is it? As I said, so, um, it takes, uh, it, it costs a hundred dollars per year to become a World Trade Center Denver. And that uh, gives you access to the Global Trade Activator Incubator Program, plus other membership benefits as well. Um, next step. So what do you need to do if you want to participate? Is uh, And when can you start, right? Because I think the question was, how often do you run them? The business is... Um, it's a fluid thing, right? So it kind of, so we, we take, you can start today. Um, and how to, how do I, do you start? You do become World Trade Center Denver member first. And the link is here on the slides. Uh, but I think I'm are gonna just put that link to become a member, um, in the chat as well. You do need to make sure that uh, that if you qualify for your first generation um, immigrant, to make sure that you specify that immigrant because that's the only way it will give you the discounts when you're signing up for the membership. Um, once you sign up, then make sure to reach out to me or Amar. Uh, our email addresses are here. Um, also, if you don't remember, just reach out to World Trade Center Denver and say that you're interested in Global Trade Activator Program, and um, the staff will direct you to us as well. And we'll schedule a phone interview and start with that assessment to make sure that we place you in the right group. And um, yeah, and we'll be uh, happy to welcome you to the program. With that, I'm going to stop share so that we can see everybody here on the screen and open it up for conversation. We do want to make sure that it's 
useful to you. So any questions you have or comments, um, I welcome you for the open dialogue. Wonderful. It looks like the one question that was in the chat, it looks like Amar has answered, which just for those watching the recording was, um, Usman says he works with many in- immigrant entrepreneurs. How do they get signed up and how often are the programs running? Um, I think those questions were all answered and the link is there in the chat. And of course you can reach out to the World Denver team anytime. Um, but if there are other questions, Now's the time. And thank you guys so much for the presentation. It's been wonderful. Very interesting. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was a pleasure to present. And uh, we can't wait to um, welcome uh, new members to World Trade Center Denver and help them with international business with any needs they have, they might have.